You're listening to the A3K Network on Anime3000.com. Warning. The views and opinions expressed by this producer are not necessarily the views and opinions expressed by Anime 3000, its producers, partners, or affiliates. Listener discretion is advised. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. You're listening to the A3K Podcast, the official podcast of Anime3000.com. I'm your host, Sean Russell, executive producer and master builder of the A3K Network. As always, I'm joined by my co-host, J.D. Banks from the Manga Corner and Cody Beyer from the other side. On today's show, J.D. places a gypsy curse on two all-but-forgotten anime series. Cody nearly coughs up a lung as he discusses Tenshi Miyo, Inuyasha, and other series. And Sean Russell feels icky after watching Black Bullet. All this and more on the A3K Podcast. Alright, so, welcome to the A3K Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Russell, and of course, we're joined by J.D. Bonks. I'm going to pronounce your names wrong on this one. J.D. Bonks from the Manga Corner and Cody Bear from the other side. Sorry? I've had to hear Cody Bear all my life. You've Cody just triggered Bear. me. Of course. Yeah, actually, Banks is normal. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm Sean Roussel, just so I don't feel left out, left myself out. We're going to jump straight into the what you've been dot, dot, dotting, because I'm sure I recorded a nice little intro to tell you what this show is about, or at least what 10% of the show was about, because unlike other podcasts, we talk about over a thousand things, not just 999. So going first, last week was JD. So this week we're going to have Cody go first about what he's been dot, dot, dotting. And don't mind, don't mind his, his voice. It's not one of his, his vocal impressions that he does during the show. He's actually sick, but that won't count as what you've been dot, dot, dotting. So yes, I, I am sick. I have the mother of all flus, but I will not let it stop me. I am a trooper. I am that badass. Um, because I have been sick, I have had to like, you know, enjoy some stuff to make the time go away and make pass the time and make not kind of distract myself from feeling awful. Actually, after talking about it last week, I got the gumption to reread Frank and Fran and I forgot just how fucking brilliant that fucking thing is. My God, the fucking! I just finished the chapter. There was like a big Super Sentai joke because there's multiple ones. They like it's like a recurring thing. Whereas like one of the Sentinels, who are basically the common Rider guys, like was trying to stop an evil organization. Then he finds out what the evil organization's plot is, and it's to like help out charities and promote well-being throughout the world and promote world peace and feed the hungry so that the world will end through human overpopulation. (laughs) So, like, by the end of it, like, in order to fight the evil organization and stop them from destroying the world, he's, like, destroying fucking... uh, They're trying to, like, give water to people in the desert, and he's destroying their water, and he's going around destroying charities to stop the evil organization and shit. Nice. It's 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 fucking great. Every, if you haven't, if you folks haven't started reading it yet, go read Frank and Fran. It's one of the fucking best manga that's out there. Then I've been I watched the new JoJo. It was fucking great. But I mean, who was fucking surprised JoJo? And we got to see the new the new opening because because we didn't get to see the opening in episode one. And that new opening is badass. And I love that the title of the song is "Stand Proud." That I had had a giggle, that it is called "Stand Proud." I don't. I don't. Is that something I'm because, supposed to get if I watch because, JoJo? Yes, because the powers that debut in part three, that basically become the main powers throughout JoJo, are called stands. Nice. Which in itself is another music reference. It's a reference to the song "Stand by Me." Oh, okay. Did um did the second series actually come out? Um, as Crunchyroll said yes. it would? Yes, it did. 
Nice. So it's, I will be marathoning that so yes. I can watch the first episode. I I will make a guarantee. I will make a Sean Russell guarantee that I will be able to follow along with Cody next week as he talks about JoJo yet again. And and everybody's getting the JoJo bug. Uh, Jameer Durham of Two Game has uh, messaged me to inform me he now is also a fan of JoJo. He caught the bug. Everybody, it, you know, one of us, one of us, Google. People gobble one of us. Now, now, Sean Russell, you're next. You're like the last guy left. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I have the bug. I just took a little hiatus because I wanted, I knew they said the second series would come out once they um, released the second episode of Stardust. So I was waiting for that, which is upon recording, I should have happened today. So that'll give me all of next week so we can have two voices. Yes. Two voices on the JoJo Express. Actually, JD's on a JoJo Express, but she's just yeah. kind of over us talking about it. So it, this, this podcast will be fully engulfed by JoJo next week. Yes. And so, that is in reference to the third series where they, one of the special powers is the engulf power. It, it's not, but... <laughs> I'm just joking. There is a dude that attacks by uh, infiltrating your dreams like Freddy Krueger with a Grim Reaper clown. Nice. So it's kind of, we're kind of like Death 13. All right. And speaking of Death 13, JD, what have you been dot, dot, dotting? Death? Why, why do I have a transition with death in it? <laughs> uh, Would you rather be the guy that owns Death 13? Do you want to be a little baby with an old man face called Manish Boy? No. <laughs> then go with then go with the Grim Reaper clown. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, um, I did. I watched uh, Appleseed, uh, Ex Machina. I guess is what they say. It's the sequel to the 2004 film, which sucked, by the way. And uh, um, but the 2007 one's pretty good. It's uh, directed by the same guy who did the 2004 film, Shinji Aramaki, and um, it was actually produced this time by John Woo. So oh, nice. some of the action Woo. scenes, yeah, some of the action. Did it have scenes. doves flying? Yeah, they actually did have some doves. Of so. course they did. Yeah, doves or or pigeons. One of the one of those. <laughs> That's when you we don't have when you have a, a small budget, it becomes pigeons. <laughs> yeah, so it was pretty cool. I I liked it. Uh, it was a little long, but uh, I, it was kind of like it was a really cool action sci fi kind of flick, and it definitely learned a lot from the two thousand four failure. So I was kind of happy about that. I was like, oh, please don't be like 2000, the 2004 Appleseed one where it was all just talking and talking. And then here's a little bit of action and then talking and more talking. I was like, uh, all right, let's skip ahead. Oh, more talking. OK, well, this one's really good, though. It actually has a lot of action in it. So, yay. <laughs> and uh, and then I read a manga called uh, Doubt by um, Kaneyoshi Izuma. And actually, this is already published by Viz, but um, I believe another... I think uh, Yen Press is republishing it this month. So I just decided to go and actually read past the first chapter. And I'm like, oh, it's a shoujo. Definitely a shoujo about a girl who used to be a Jimmy, which means like they're plain and just really plain person. And so plain that people make fun of them. And like, and so this girl after middle school, she decides to when she goes to high school to become beautiful. So she diets, she does all these beauty products, and and you know buys like expensive underwear and all this stuff, and <laughs> tries to like get a boyfriend in high school. So I'm just like, not the kind of series I really want to be reading. I don't really want to read a school manga or anime or anything like that. So I'm just like. <laughs> So I read some of it. And I was like, yeah, this is definitely for girls with the knights in shining armor kind of uh, manga. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, not my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've been doing. All right. Oh, real quick. I forgot something. Uh -oh. and I got to say this. I found out something. I've not seen it, but I found out it exists. And I don't know if you guys know it exists. So I'm going to tell you about it. I found out that there is a manga and anime film based on the manga about Jesus and Buddha being roommates in Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know what you're talking about. Saint Young Men. I'm still <laughs> having a hard time believing this is an actual thing and not a joke I told. 
Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about, actually. Uh... Jesus and Buddha decide to have a vacation on Earth, and they live in Japan, and they just get in sitcom adventures, but it's fucking actually Jesus and actually Buddha. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. There's an ant. There's a movie. Yeah. yeah. Saint Saint Young Men. I know the manga though. Yeah, Any so good? I, I have not seen it. I just knew about it, and then some of the guys, some of the guys at Project After told me about it. And I was like, "What? I gotta see this." Nice. <laughs> um. Well, speaking of seeing this, I am going to talk about what I've watched. And I, outside of my usual watching Hunter Hunter and um, what else did I read? I didn't read that much this week, if not anything. But I did watch a few anime in my attempt to cover the entire spring season. I watched, the first thing I watched was Captain Earth. Insert your Captain Planet joke here. And um <laughs> did, did he take pollution down to zero? Um no, but um I'm thinking of the other verse and it's too late, the joke is gone. So first thing that came to my mind when I watched Captain Earth was Digimon. The scene where he is a younger kid immediately just I guess from the color of his outfit and the way his face looked and the character design reminded me of Digimon, but that's about it. The what I had watched before, before, before watching Captain Earth was Black Bullet. So, the character design and the animation for Captain Earth really seemed a little, a little shoddy to me. And it wasn't a big fan of the character designs or the animation, only because it looked a little sloppy to me. Not to say that I could have done better, but who can most of the in most of the cases when you're reviewing things. If not, I would be making my own animation right now. But I felt I wasn't really happy with that part of it, especially trying to pick it apart. But um, the story revolves around this boy who once, whose father was a captain. He piloted piloted a mecha, and he is what I liked. What I did like about the series is it doesn't spend a lot of time on exposition. It just kind of throws you into the story and lets things happen. There's flashbacks, but you're constantly watching things happen on the screen. And he he's a really mellow dude. You know, he's obviously going to be the main character who pilots a, pilots a robot. You don't have to watch the first episode to know that. But he isn't like a super annoying Shinji character or even... Uh, Aaron character like in an attack on Titan whose mech is the actual Titan um, um that's a spoiler if you haven't watched attack on Titan go kill yourself right now so um, I haven't you, watched it but I'm you've to. watched at least one episode Cody no seriously I, I'm planning to I told you I'm saving it for the dub dude just I'm, oh. I am holding out because I want to see it dubbed. But at least, you, at least, but you agree with me. It's a good show, right? Yes, I know. I, I don't even have to have seen it. I know what's in it, and I know it's good. Well, the boy, when he's younger, he goes. He finds this what looks like to be an abandoned uh, facility, and a little boy comes up, and they kind of become friends. And he does. He the boy, the main character, is wearing this um, thing around his neck. And he makes a little deal with the other boy on the other side of the fence. And he says, if I can amaze you or make you surprise you, I'll give you. Um, you no, know, the guy says, if you can surprise me, you'll give me the amulet, the little thing. So they end up surprising each other, doing cool things, you know, jumping off fences and making magic happen. Then the boy brings them inside of the facility and they go through, you know, different cellars and dark hidden passage passageways and things of that nature and they come upon this girl who's locked in this orb and the boy who was on the other side of the fence pretty much says yeah she's always sleeps and by this time he's now wearing the necklace so the guy the main character who's a little boy in his flashback touches it and it wakes the girl up and he gives it back to her. So these are all little subtle things that kind of explains the relationship with this boy and some of the characters that are going to play a pivotal role in the series a little bit later. And that's one of the things I did like about it is because it kind of just lets things happen and lets you infer 
the importance of these people instead of them saying, well, this person is a lost child and he has the secret power to unlock all the mysteries of Earth. <laughs> and this, which is like, well, you've been working with this guy for 15, for 10 years. Why are you explaining this now? You know, some of the things that most shows outside of anime, they do and I can't stand. Um, oh, there's also a cameo which I don't think is intended, but there's a cameo from Ed from Cowboy Bebop in it as well. Meaning that there's a character that looks exactly like Ed who's in front of a computer. I don't know if that's a, a nod to Cowboy Bebop, but that's what Probably it is. <laughs> um, so the, outside of that, the, um, you know, their, uh, the idea is that <coughs> they pilot robots and they fight other people who pilot robots. And that's the part that kind of threw me off. In past episodes, I've kind of mentioned my disdain for um, shows that just kind of throw a lot of mech action at you without really tying you into the characters. And making there's you something care. about Japan that w- there's some mentality going over there with their TV shows. They think all we have to do is put a giant robot in it, and that's all anyone's going to care about. <laughs> and, but it's not even in there's Japan. You had that with Transformers as well. The, the yeah, but movie. it was a blatant shit to sell toys. I mean, talking that about the, the same That was the same shit as, like, He-Man. You know, just, so it's like... it's like have them fight, and then everybody's going to want to buy the toys. But um, that was the part. I was like, last five minutes. And funny enough, on my timeline on Twitter, that's what everyone was raving about. Oh, the last ten minutes, last five minutes. And that's actually the part that I like the least. So um, Captain Earth has promise, only because I feel people are going to be talking about it. Last thing you want to do is watch a series that no one is talking about, because then you're on a you're on an island by yourself, and there's a lot, little chance that it's going to be picked up for anything. But um, I think Captain Earth is one of those series that people are hoping will be good, and a lot of people have liked at least the first episode. So uh, hopefully, I might check it out a little bit more. But it's not like high on my radar. The next series that I want to talk about is Black Bullet. And this is one of the shows that That's I talked <laughs> uh, that I wanted to watch from the PVs that I saw even before <laughs> it. And I know you guys slammed it on the um, on the other side um, for whatever reason. Maybe it's because it was made by Katakawa or whatever. But the I forget what it is. If I remember what it is, I remember why we made fun <laughs> of it. But um, so much bad anime this season. I can't even keep track. Anymore. The one good thing about Black Bullet is it is a beautiful series. Um, the animation, the character design, the colors, is just a very clean show, just the way it looks visually. One of the worst things about it is the icky relationships between the main characters, the two main characters. Now, the premise behind it is that there are people called the Cursed Children, and they're all girls, and they're they're the result of these monsters called Gastera or Gastira, and all of a sudden, this they're like Godzilla type creatures. You know, I think some of them are moths and some are spiders and things of that nature. And once you get attacked by one, you almost get like zombie like symptoms and eventually become that creature. So, and it there's a flashback and it, it shows how this all happened. And then they put up these um, pillars around the city um, that are made of Veronica. Varanium, which also is why they call them black bullets because the bullets are made of varanium. They're the only thing that seems to um, have an effect on these monsters. So as a result of that attack that happened before they put up these pillars, the children and the offspring from this time were called the cursed children. Now the cursed children are teamed up with initiators and in this series the main character enju is an initiator no actually no he's a, he's promoter. a promoter promoter satomi rentaro is a promoter and enju is his initiator who is a cursed children a cursed child rather now the, going back to the ickiness she it's it's not unique to this and you've seen it all the time and i'm sure Lord. you've talked about it um at nauseam um cody with the Oni Chan, you want to kiss me, sort of crap, uh, and that that is a big part of this series. The fucking oh, my little sister wants to jump yeah. my bones. What and a dilemma! She, is she and she is is she oh, is? Anime. It's 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 tongue in cheek, really. 
but it's there. And I'm tired she, of this shit. She looks like she's probably seven or eight years old. Oh my and he's god. He's like twenty three. She's a middle schooler if my memory so she's yeah, probably I, like twelve, but she I looks super like young. This. Yeah. The yeah, good thing about it is they, she's not scantily clad or she's not like wearing nothing, which is good. But the same ickiness is there. That's and, sad when that's the, that's the plus. Well, at least she's wearing clothes. Well, I mean, you look at that last <laughs> look at that last season, that show from last season with that, you know. Oh God, the one that, with the dragons or whatever it was. Uh, yeah, whatever. She's ruling the world. Zaveda or that oh, show. Oh, God, that thing. No. Yeah, that it could be that. So, <laughs> but um. It's the idea is it has like elements of I, although I haven't seen the series I feel like darker than black and things of that nature where it starts off with this guy with a with a drama mask like you know drama drama and comedy or whatever that type of smiling. Darker than black didn't have the drama mask though. Darker than black was what was that... what was what was the other one then? Um, There's two that were similar. I don't know. Darker than black it was just a generic kind of looking mask. <sighs> Forget. Black Blood Brothers. I don't know. Whatever. There, there's well, he has one of those masks, and he's like super invincible. The guy kicks him in the face. His head spins around and cracks, and comes back around, and he's shooting people behind the back, and he's super cool. And oh, I want to rule the world, and blah blah blah. But in a cool, slick sort of, I'm smooth, gonna jump out of a window and do a backflip sort of way. And um, I felt like I've seen that before, but um, I guess what they're going for is, hey, he's a cool character, and you really, really like him, but. It's this guy, they're teamed up, initiated promoters, and um, they're, they work for an agency, and the agency is, like, behind some seedy little place, and the, um, all of the people that this guy, that Rentaro interacts with are pretty women, and um, I think it's, like, it really panders to a certain type of audience, but at the same time tries to mask it with a cool action seems to be sort of psychological thriller type anime series. So I don't know how much of it, it kind of disappointed me. Uh, even the music is a little distracting at times. I've noticed that like, I want to say a specific scene, but then the next scene, it also distracted me. And then a scene after that, it distracted me. So the music <laughs> isn't even that great, but they, the character design and the colors and just the way that it looks visually is enough for me to, give it a few more episodes it's a pretty generic plot but um it looks beautiful so black bullet and then the final thing i watched is fairy tale because i watched the fairy tale dvds that i got from funimation and i like the dub so i just wanted to catch up on that and i'm going to be doing the show on the crunchy report so i have to follow the fairy tale anyway so i was i don't know how i felt that it wasn't a reboot because everyone kind of told me it was going to start from the first episode, but it looks like it's starting from where the last episode of the previous se series ended. That's Although weird. I don't know. I it was a reboot too. I don't, I don't know where it ended, but it felt like it was continuing <laughs> from where everyone kind of knows what happened. And um, so I kind of feel like if you watched a little bit of fairy tale and you didn't watch like the hundred gap between the Funimation and, episodes in the simulcast episodes you can jump in and kind of get a grip of what's going on with this episode like i don't feel like i've missed anything of importance of course there's a little there's a few more cat creatures than i remember in the last time i watched oh my God. but um one to that effect there is this cool scene in the episode between a cat creature and the leader of i, I think i want to say it was the armageddon or some some fairy tale troop um some guild out there where they're competing for, well, the basic idea is they're competing for um, who's the top guild or some crap like that. Some, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. kind of like that. They're competing. This... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, because I read the, I, I have the manga actually. So I I was like, what are you talking about skipping? And I was like, oh, wait, I'm reading the manga. So. <laughs> yeah. So they're, so they're competing for this. Who's the best guild? And I think fairy tale is like number one or number two, but they're like way up there. And this guild's kind of pissed off. And the guy's like, you know, you guys lost. And I guess this is us. This is the, um, I guess it was what happened in the previous episode before it went off. And 
you know, some things happened that I thought was pretty cool and what reminded me why I do like fairy tale. Cause it starts off like if you watch fairy tale, you know how fairy tale usually starts off. They're in a guild hall and, and there's music playing in the background. <laughs> and then Natsu's like, you better shut up. And then the ice guy's like, you shut up. And they're like fighting each other and they do something stupid and it pierces, pisses Ursa off. And she goes, I'm going to beat you up. And that's how, like, how I feel every episode of Fairy Tale starts, and then oh. something happens, and then it's like, oh, that let's go. sounds riveting. I better get on that uh, gravy train. No, I mean, the, 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 the manga is gonna... different, though. It's like, that's like the like third chapter or so in the manga, or, or you start off with Lucy actually running somewhere. She. You know, in the manga, so this kind of different start than in the anime series. But this is what I like about fairy tale because if you watch a couple of episodes, you know that's just how they start. I think it's kind of just to ease you into what's going to happen in that episode because that usually just lasts at max about five minutes. And then this, I guess it's just comic relief. Oh, I'm happy's fish got fried, and oh, happy never gets a break. <laughs> and then something <laughs> crazy. They switch to another scene, and then shit starts to go down. So that happened in this episode and it, it really revolved around the dragon slayers and the dragons. And, and at one point, one of the dragons comes up back from the dead as a ghost and explains what happened to, you know, why, you know, what happened to the dragons, why there are no more dragons and things of that nature. And um, I found that part to be very interesting. It was almost like, I didn't know that. Cool. <laughs> and um, one thing I did notice, and I'm kind of talking about the art style, which is something I normally don't do, but I was I was hoping that there was going to be an upgrade with this new series. And that was one of the reasons they did that. I don't, I don't know why they did a reboot, but not a reboot, but got a new production company to do the art and whatnot. But it looks like if my memory serves me correct, the art took a dip in quality with this new one. I wasn't super happy with what I saw. It seemed um, a little lazy to me. I, cause I re remember it might just be my fuzzy memory fairy tale looking a little better than it does right now. So hopefully if you're watching this post in the show notes, if you think it looks better or worse, but I think it looks worse this time around, but the story it has the same feel. And obviously cause I'm ripping from the manga, uh, of a fairy tale show and it's good. I'm going to continue watching it without feeling like I'm wasting my time because I, I'm not ashamed to say I like fairy tale. It's a fun series and um, yeah, definitely check that out. That's pretty much what I've been doing. And as far as anime, I'm also, yeah, uh, an update on the, if you're in the Orlando area, the Florida anime experience we are go for that we will be there it's the week of memorial weekend our the week of the 23rd 24th and 25th and we will be controlling the video room so i'm gonna be myself taking over yeah we'll be taking over the place yeah fool yeah. um it was kind of bittersweet on that note i talked about ultimate warrior and then shortly after he died that was mm -hmm. kind of sad i didn't or well, didn't see that coming but that's my bit on warrior but um not to jump all over the place. Florida anime experience. We will be controlling the video room. Will be Mike, me, Jameer from Two Guys and a Mike, and Mike Martinez as well. So you'll we all be there. I won't be there because I don't live in Florida. He does not live in Florida, unfortunately. Yes. He's not fortunate to live in the Sunshine State. I'm stuck in horrible Maryland. Oh, I'm poor. stuck in Japan. <laughs> it's a shame that you guys don't have conventions. The, um, good conventions where you live that rival the stuff we have in Florida. It's a shame. Oh, it's a shame that I do. It's and, a shame that you didn't Florida. know I was being sarcastic. <laughs> and it's a shame that you don't come to the convention that's really big in my state. You did once. I did once, then yes. I didn't again, unfortunately. It was, Otakon was awesome. I'm, I gotta you admit. You should come back. Because I'm, if I could, I want to meet you and see you in person again. To see you in person with your new Bob Ross, not Bob Ross, Rick Ross beard. <laughs> I, if I could swing it, I'll definitely go back to Otakon because I really enjoy. Otakon. I want to get, even though I hate that song, I want to get hustling on my iPod just <laughs> so I can play the hook when you walk in and walk out of the room. <laughs> you know what's funny about Otakon? I I don't know if you saw me retweet it, but 
uh, One Piece podcast posted a throwback Thursday picture. Yeah, I saw of, that. Of them in Otakon. And I'm looking at, I just happened to look at it. <laughs> and I'm like, hold on. Is that Cody in there in the crowd for that? And sure enough, it was you. Yeah, I, 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 you could see I'm the one holding the sketchbook. <laughs> look, but judging by the look on my face, I think that's when they were in. That might have been when they were in the middle of like some of the anti bleach shit. I still don't understand the weird hate boner One Piece fans have for bleach. I'll never get it. I mean, yeah, One Piece is better than bleach, but. You'd think tight Kubo raped their mamas or something. <laughs> like they, I remember on that that very that very thing, the very gathering that we went to, they gave away zombie powder as a booby prize, and I'm like, ain't nothing wrong with zombie powder. I thought your I booby, know, right? I thought the booby prize was gonna be fucking Astaroth's toy or something. Zombie, there's nothing wrong with zombie powder, but because it's tight Kubo and. They hate all that is tight Kubo of some weird. It's I think it's just something that snowballed. Like they were disappointed in where Bleach was going, and then they were feeding off of everybody else's hate, like in the One Piece community. And it's just this weird enabling snowball that became this bizarre, just irrational hate for all things tight Kubo and Bleach. I'll never get it. You know what it's, it is? It's a, it's a weird war tactic. It's to focus all of your focus everybody on one enemy so that way you can pull them together and they might not really have an issue with bleach it's just now you can have everybody talking about one piece but then that gets boring after a while negative negativity negativity is what gets people gets people's hearts pumping so it's like let's all hate this one thing so even if you get bored talking about one piece you'll get excited hating this well it was it it did reach its peak kind of get worse when one piece was having some really fucking terrible story arcs so maybe that was it like it was like let's distract ourselves from the fact that we're in the middle of the fish man island arc and this is terrible so well let's just say how terrible bleach is so that we don't have to say how terrible our favorite manga is misdirection <laughs> <laughs> no oh, guys i have to have you're going to have to face it fish man island was a dark time for one piece that was a shitty arc that was a bad time to be a One Piece fan. We're going to have to admit it to ourselves. We're going to have to just sit down and help each other cope. Hating Bleach is not going to make Fishman Island any better. <laughs> and I speaking noticed... about not making... You... JD, were you going to say something? Yeah, I'm sorry. I just noticed, Cody, you were saying Tights Kubo. It's, tight uh, Kubo. I know it's, actually his name is actually a little funnier than, than that. Actually, the pronunciation would be T-Te. <laughs> is it just a pseudonym? Isn't it like a pen name? Yeah, but if you, I mean, I'm going by the Japanese pronunciation, so. <laughs> so it's Tite Kubo? Yeah, but I mean, yeah. Kubo sucks at non-Japanese languages, and that's precariously close to Titty, so I'm going with Titty. I know, yeah, that's what's funny. <laughs> well. So if I were to address him, I'd say Tite. Tite Kubo. He's like, shut up. I'm going with Tight Kubo sounds better. It rolls off the tongue better. It sounds less like Titty. Knowing his tenuous grasp on anything that is in his native language. And you, and you don't want to be that person in the crowd saying, It's not Tai Kubo! It's Tai Tai Kubo! I'm a shit up, nerd! <laughs> I'm like, well, if you're going to say it like that, or write it that way, it's then not, I'm going to say it that way. It's not anime, it's anime. <laughs> <laughs> like, See, this is, this I is like say. Japanese inability to grasp like phonetics in other languages. So... <laughs> um. All right, and with that, we're going to go to a break. And then when we come back from the break, we are going to look at our questions, our poll questions, our poll dancer questions, as I like to call it. No, I don't. We'll be right back. What did the Anime Addicts Anonymous hosts think of Hatalia cosplayers? In the Church of Mitsugi, we will line up all of the Hatalia cosplayers in the front of the church. Anime. And we will have a trapdoor... Or they will fall into the pits of hell. Addicts. You need to give them a chance for salvation. No. They can revoke their hotel. There is no chance for their souls. What if, Anonymous. What if they take off their costume and burn it upon their your souls? Altar? It has already tainted them. Podcast. Visit the anime addicts at aaapodcast.com and iTunes. And you too can join the church of Mitsugi.
are back. And we're going to be talking about our questions. And before we go into what the people think, I want to go into what the people think. And JD, yeah, what the question is, first off, which shows have fallen off the radar? Because I always feel like every year an Attack on Titan comes into our ether. Something like Inuyasha falls off the radar. So, in your opinion, what are some shows that have fallen off the radar of the average anime fan? <laughs> average anime fan? Oh. Because um... like, you have some that are like, oh, I remember that show from 1974, and this show is still with my heart of hearts. Well, I mean, because a lot of shows that I've ever watched, anime especially, are, are classics, you know, like Ghost in the Shell and Dragon Ball and stuff like that. So I honestly, I really don't know because I don't follow all the seasons. I just I'm more of a manga person. So <laughs> so you don't feel like there's any show that was super popular, even say five years ago, that no one it's not coming up in any conversation whatsoever. Well, I would say and this is kind of like a just. I guess because I had to follow the seasons at that time was the was a wolf something bund and the oh, I forgot the name Using of it. Using the vampire bund. Yeah, that one. I the only thing one. people were talking about with that <laughs> show is that it's gross and that gross people watch it. <laughs> but no, it was popular. You have to admit that whether those no, people were was right or good human it, people. No, it was popular. I went to a few anime clubs and people were all over that series. Well, those yeah. people are people that need to be on watch lists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i remember that i watched like the first like three episodes at first i liked the first episode and then and then at the ending of it i was like oh come on like okay like, if well... you say if you say you like the first episode i can only assume it was one of those animes that don't have the opening on the first episode <laughs> if you saw and... that opening and you're like i'm gonna continue to watch this you got some issues I was just like I was like, uh, I'm going to, uh, at first I was like, the ending was what really like, was like, oh my gosh, like why they do this? You know, I was like, I can see that, you know, but then I was like, you know, I'll just give it a try, you know, and I, and I gave it a try and I, up to the third episode, I was like, I forget this, you know, so. Screw you guys, I'm going home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not, see, this is the thing. I'm not as much of an anime watcher like I used to be. So I really don't know what's really falling off the radar. radar so I can, I'm I can more a bunch. All right, yeah, so, yeah, so I'm going to hand it over to Cody. Hand it over Cody to Cody. What's well, falling off the radar, Cody Barr? I read books. So that's what I do. As, <laughs> so. as folks may remember, this is, a, this is like a cycle that goes up and down. For the most part, I'm glad when these shows fall off because usually the show that was really... The anime fandom has a terrible fucking taste in anime. I've noticed from being burned by recommendations from the, from the crowd that... <laughs> Generally, when these things fall off, I'm glad because I hate them. There's only even a couple exceptions, but I remember first, you know, when when everything was really big. Of course, DBZ was the shit. DBZ never really went away though. So the kids and, Funimation keeps releasing it. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I think it, it was somebody at Funimation. I can't remember, but it said like there's an eight year old born every minute. That's why they keep making new editions of Dragon Ball Z. That's true. And I love that because a it was honest and b it's fucking true and c y'all are great businessmen. Keep on keeping on. Make that money so you can dub more shows. I love Funimation. They own my soul. I'll admit it. I'll show all day for them. Funimation, you should be watching. <laughs> I love that damn company. But, like, you had... I remember Tenchi Muyo was huge way back when I was a teenager. Tenchi. Everything ten, Tenchi was all over the 1990s internet. Yeah, I remember all that. All kinds of Tenchi. Everything Tenchi. The big Tenchi Muyo fan fiction archive. I remember that was big. And Tenchi was huge. I was in Tenchi at the time. Now it's just kind of I'm only I only like a couple Tenchi things because I've noticed that some of them are good and then some of them are really terrible because they're all done by different people. And then it's, I just kind of find it funny that the Tenchi stuff by the original creator of Tenchi is really terrible. <laughs> it's one of those <clears throat> few few instances where the original creator did not know best. Because the Tenchi Muyo OVAs, they're pretty bad. And then you have Tenchi in Tokyo, that's pretty bad. Tenchi Universe is actually okay. It's not great, but it's okay. Pretty cool. Um, there's these Tenchi Manga. The No Need for Tenchi Manga is actually probably the best iteration of the series. It's a little more uh, lighthearted and funny. And a little more stylish. And I like that. Um, and then the movies, like the first one was pretty cool. The second one was garbage. And then the third one was actually surprisingly good and different. I really like that third one. 
And then like this Tenchi just dropped off. And now no, but there's there's nothing Tenchi. Tenchi's dead to the internet now. <laughs> I, just, I remember a little while ago, I was like, you know, whatever happened to Tenchi? I wonder if there's still all the fan stuff and if that, that presence is still around. And I just, you'd think it was an obscure title now. Like this, and, it, and it's not like Funimation hasn't re-released some of the Tenchi products. I mean, the last even in the last year, and still hasn't, I guess, resurfaced I think, as a thing. I honestly, one of the things I'd blame on the sort of death of Tenchi is that all the good Tenchi is done. Like you had, I said, the manga is over, and that was good. Tenchi Universe long over, and the two movies that were in Tenchi Universe's canon one and three, though they're, they're movies, they're over. So good Tenchi is done, and then they had to, they brought in more Tenchi. They brought in a third OVA, and then that War on Geminar, and they're also terrible. So <laughs> it sounds like a lot of it's terrible. Yeah, it, it really. Maybe is. that's why it died. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like good Tenchi is done. I think that's why it died off. Because yes, there's more Tenchi stuff, but it's terrible. All the good stuff came and went. It's over, and it wasn't like super great. Like I'm not like. Some stuff is, like, so good, but even when it's over, it still stays around in your psyche because it's so damn good. Like, I'm still going to be talking about Cowboy Bebop and Bacchano and shit like that for years and years to come, even though that those animes are over. But, like, Tenshi was like, I'll watch it every now and then. if like, And that's, like, if Cowboy Bebop and, and like, Black Lagoon, Bacchano and, and Desert Punk, if that's, like, really well done, like, gourmet restaurant food, if that's like the sh- the shit that I eat on a date, you know, like Tenchi's like chips, Tenchi's potato chips. It's got a really cool villain and it's got some charming characters and it's entertaining me. The like and the, um, again, I'm talking about the Tenchi universe and the movies and the manga because the rest of it's terrible. And then you had Evangelion was huge, still kind of big. It's got that continued press. I, I, I wouldn't say it. I would say, obviously, it's not as huge as it was, but I think with the release of the new movies, when the movies are coming like, out, people you, are talking you, about them. Movies aren't getting that huge. Oh, like, that third one was, was – there was a lot of buzz around that third was, one. Buzz, the third one was mostly, oh, my God, look at all the shit that's different. Yeah. That was the buzz <laughs> of the third one. It wasn't really like the way it used to be with Evangelion where everybody's talking about it. There's still some hangers on. I think it's probably bigger in Japan than it is in the West now. Which Digimon? I am. Which I know. Evangelion. Evangelion, yeah. Well, Evangelion's pretty big here, but I think that I think more of their merchandise is is bigger than the actual show itself. Well, yeah, because it's for it's for loser dudes who want to get the girl <laughs> figures and then come on. Them. <laughs> That's not but, even. But, there's but, bugs. but they have but they have like things like um, you have things like phone cards and. And cell phone covers and stuff like that of the mecha and stuff like that I see in the news cycle all the time. Yeah, but um, I mean, like the, said, the I girl think, is more popular. I figure, yeah, obviously. I was trying to give them a little. I was trying to give them a little something. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to make it so Cody's not always right when he says horrible things about people. Um, I, gotta, I gotta provide a balance. Or this is the other side. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it's. Even Gallium's pretty much, I mean, let's face it, that's dropped off. I mean, that's always going to have a presence. But, I mean, I think, honestly, and this warms my heart, that people did f- start seeing it for the bullshit that it was. Like, the stupid, ridiculous, fo- like, Crispin Freeman, the voice actor, has a, a class on, like, not only does he teach voice acting, because I actually have a friend that is a an up-and-coming voice actress that was taught by Crispin Freeman. <laughs> And not only does he teach that, but he teaches, he has things on like uh, mythology and psychology in anime. And I remember he started one class with no one bring up Evangelion because that is empty. What do you say? Like it was empty, superfluous bullshit. Like even like even people that like are really like really get into examining this stuff are like, yeah, Evangelion is just like what a 13 year old thinks is deep. Like, once you're an adult and you watch Evangelion, it's hard not to laugh. Like, the whole, when he, when Shinji's swallowed by that angel that's like a shadow, and he's in the, tra- this, the like, astral plane train monorail thing, and then the weird jittering lines representing different sides of him does the whole speech of, I am myself, the self is composed of two selves. Like, again, we, you know, R.I.P. Kuso, um, we... <laughs> 
my um, my brother who was my sidekick on that show. We did a scene where it was just show how ridiculous the dialogue was. We did like people in real life saying Evangelion dialogue where we just like one of us would say something and the other one would respond with an evil line. And one of them, we literally took, it was a scene that lasted a matter of seconds and it took us 10 minutes to shoot because we could, literally couldn't say it with a straight face. And it was the I am myself line. Every, my brother was supposed to be the one saying it and every time he would get halfway through saying it, either he or I would just crack up laughing because the line was so stupid. <coughs> so I think people started to see that. And there are still people that sort of obsess over Ava, but by and large, I think people got the message that it's garbage. Which, and speaking of a show that was really big and then people realized it sucked, Haruhi Suzumiya. <laughs> where the hell did that go? The cult of Haruhi or whatever. It's I don't still know around, it, though. I don't Here, know where, anyways. I don't know where it went, but nah, 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 nah. Nah, 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 nah. No, please. No, <laughs> no, no. no. Good Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of the biggest pieces of trash that the anime fandom ever decided to pretend had merit. And I had to sit through the the obsession around that show for God knows how long, listen to these fucking dorks, and they are dorks, saying things like, I would die for Haruhi, and doing that fucking dance at conventions. I swear to God, if I had unfettered freedom at Otakon, anyone doing that stupid fucking end credits dance from Haruhi, I would have hit with a two by four. <laughs> oh my fuck that horrible show. And <laughs> I like, liked the reason I like Haruhi Suzumiya is because she reminded me of somebody that I would like to be friends with when I was in high school. <laughs> the obnoxious everybody look at me, bitch. <laughs> Cause she's cool, and I don't have to say anything. But being around her, everyone will know that I'm part of the SS Brigade. Yeah, she so was, SS Brigade. She was a horrible SS Brigade. That's yeah, something she, different. <laughs> yeah, really, shit. No, she was a giant bitch. I remember trying to watch Haruhi, and I ended up reviewing reviewing it for Kuso, and <clears throat> she was like, I wanted her to die. Like, by episode one, I was getting legitimately pissed. Like, oh my god, she's never going to die, is she? Like, to the point where Max Vader found a uh, Haruhi Dojin where Kion slaps the shit out of heart. <laughs> and it became, like, Project After's Golden Chalice for a while. We were just circulating those pages of him slapping Haruhi around like they were fucking the proof of God. Oh my god, like, I, oh, that was a horrible... That, that was hard to get through. But then what happened was they shot themselves in the foot. Like, I mean, they were pretty much getting by on pandering to people for a while. And they weren't, the show wasn't really going anywhere, but Hey, cute girls. And there's their day to day bullshit, but there's also magic stuff. And you can obsess over it with your heart. He wiki. But then they did endless eight. Endless eight is the worst thing. The worst. I'm, I'm, I would be shocked if the director of the Haruhi anime wasn't fired for this. Yeah, that kind of I think that derailed a lot of the 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 Haruhi love over here in the states because yeah. after that um, it kind of died yeah. down. Yeah, even the hardcore fans could could take that shit no more. And then like people left the show over that. Like people in the production side got pissed and left the show because they thought it was the worst idea and they couldn't be a part of it. Like, well, if you if you look at the beginning when it first came out, how do we always had a way of trolling its audience, and that was like this went too far, I guess. And that was that was the most ridiculous. I mean, literally, for those who don't know what Endless Eight is, there is a plot line where Haruhi <laughs> did summer to end, and she's she's God but doesn't know it. Which is, you gotta love your initial premise is already painting your character at main your main character out to be a Mary Sue. Isn't that great? <laughs> Uh, she's gone, doesn't know it, and she affects reality without being aware of it. And she didn't want Summer to end, so Summer kept replaying like Groundhog Day. And I think Kion, the main character, and the only character in the series that seems like a normal human being, even though he kind of sucks too, he realized it, and then like they had to find a way to do something that would end the loop. And it was so stupid what it ended up being, like getting Haruhi to finish her homework. I think that was it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what they did for eight episodes. It was the same episode. Over and over. They just literally, they didn't even reuse for it. They remade, literally, the same episode. Except they would be like slight changes. Like, they would sit in a different chair at the park. 
or I think one episode, they were wearing swimsuits or some shit. Like it, w- but it was the same episode over and over and over again for eight episodes. That's like uh, like it was like one episode a week. So that's two months of one episode. That's assholes. <laughs> worst thing. Like fuck you at that point. I'm glad your show died off. Here's a terrible show, terrible franchise. I hope Harvey falls down a cliff. <coughs> and like and then around the same time as Haruhi, we had Lucky Star, and that's pretty much tapered off too. Lucky Star was basically, for those who don't know, first of all, you're one of the lucky ones. Uh, it was basically anime's attempt at Seinfeld. Like, it was supposed to be a show about nothing. It was just like, but it was like Freeberg and Seltzer family guy shit. Just reference, 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 reference. And they all, they're supposed to be in high school when they look like they're six years old. <laughs> <laughs> they're not in high school shut up and then like th- this is how boring the show well, I'm not even kidding like they, when they were trying to make this like almost like show about nothing this is how hardcore they were going with it there was a scene I think in episode 2 or 3 that shows the, the otaku girl who's like the mascot of the show because she's the waifu of the kind of people that would watch Lucky Star um she was playing a computer game, like some kind of MMO or something. All you see is the cameras behind the the computer monitor. You can't see the computer monitor from where the camera is. All you see is her clicking and, and smiling and humming for like a minute and a half. You hear the noise of the game. You hear the game. You hear her humming for like a minute and a half, two minutes straight. To show that she's playing the game, but we don't get to see the game. I guess it's trying to, I don't know, put you in that life or whatever. That's how fucking horribly boring this show was. But it must have done something good because a lot of people liked the series. It was basically pandering to otaku in that it had the the rapeable little cupid doll characters. <laughs> And it was voyeuristic and watch, just watch them live their lives. Just watch them. So what was the difference between that show and Azumanga Daio, which did something similar? Because Azumanga Daio was more entertainment based. Like it it had a punchline. I, mean, I don't know a lot about him, Azumanga Daio. I'm not a big fan, but I do know enough to say like it has a punchline. It's going somewhere with its little shorts. The shorts have a point. Lucky Star really didn't have a point. It was just, let's watch them talk about food for five minutes. Okay, now she's playing video games at home. Now here she is, wait, like, let's show how they're different when they wake up in the morning, the four girls. And that's an episode. Like, Azumanga Daio had a point. It had something that it was going for. By the end of this short, something was fucking accomplished. Even if it was like, oh, it's a gag about finding a cat and the cat is mean. It was something. It was some- That's so funny. I was thinking about that scene when you when you were talking about it too. It was like it was something was told. A story was told with Auntie Mangadayo. With Lucky Star, there's no story to be told. It's just watch this shit. You'll watch this shit. You're fine. you don't go outside. You're gonna have nothing better to do. You're gonna watch this shit. That's what Lucky Star felt like. The whole time it's saying, like, you're gonna watch this. What are you what else are you gonna do? You got no friends. You know, hobbies that don't involve this. Let's see. Let's see if they'll watch twenty-two minutes of nothing. Exactly. But yes, they they'll are. watch if if we make all like all the girls look like fucking again rapeable cupid dolls, and then have them talk about anime endlessly. And sometimes we'll reference anime and we'll cut to a scene that looks like an anime that they know, and they'll buy it because this is anime fans. <laughs> and. I can't, and then of course, the last one that I can think of is the big one, Inuyasha. Oh, yeah. (laughs) The thing about Inuyasha that gets me, see, I was in the trenches when this shit was big. I was probably the most active in the fandom. See, now I've like given up on fandom. Fuck all y'all. I'm just going to watch the good shows and to hell with you. But back then, I was involved. I was talking to him. And I remember this shit was great because. Like, great for me in laughing at people, great. Mm-hmm. Like, Inuyasha was huge. 
And I've said before about Inuyasha, I like it, but I will admit it's like up and down. Like there are parts of Inuyasha that are awesome and then parts that are really fucking bad. It's like up and down and up and down and up and down. And like half the cast is dumb and half the cast is cool. And it's just like I wouldn't recommend it. But if you're into it too, I'll talk to you about it. <coughs> but like watching that was great because around that it, it got big when the dub came, and that was sort of my first experience dealing with weeaboos because there was this whole thing where the dub ruined it. Oh, blah, 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 blah. And this was how bad at the height of Inuyasha's popularity. This is, I think, when Yaoi fan fiction was really getting big with American fans. Like the, and I think Inuyasha helped that, because you have all these pretty boys with long, flowing hair that you could ship together with your <laughs> gay porn stories. Oh, Shishomaru. Oh, Shishomaru. Like fucking... Shishomaru made so many awkward teenage girls' panties wet. <laughs> oh, my God. Like... So many girls, you don't want to think about having wet panties. We get wet panties from Sushio Maru. <coughs> but, like, I remember this is how bad it was like with these people and the Inuyasha fandom and this mania that was going on. There was a character. His name, like, when they brought in, the, at one point, Inuyasha's going through a slump, and then the uh, Rumiko Takahashi, I think she took some time off. Because she was assembling an arc. She wanted this arc to be really good. So she was sort of mapping it out. She was taking time. Which, you know, good on her. And the anime was playing some filler while she was doing it. And that was the Band of Seven arc. That was the one that she was building toward. Band of Seven arc was pretty damn cool. That was one of the up points of Inuyasha. Um, and their leader was this dude, Bankatsu. And he had his big ass, like, sword halberd thing. And he's going to kill these guys. Now, in the Japanese version. He uses the phrase, he tells them to wash their necks. Because it's a reference to, like, the Japanese, and they cut your head off for execution, they wash your neck first. We don't have that in America. So in order to dub that, they took out that line. Because it was supposed to be a death threat, saying he's going to kill you. But if you just put wash your necks in the English dub, and uh, American audience don't know what the fuck you're talking about. So they took that line out. They just replaced it with another death threat. Now, with localization, that makes sense. <coughs> you can't just, I mean, yeah, it takes place in feudal Japan, but your audience is still Americans. They're not going to know every fucking facet about Japanese fucking culture. So you have to take out what they're not going to know. So, you know, your audience is confused. But man, that caused a fucking shit storm. I remember so well. This is, this is the state of the internet. In a way, some things just haven't changed. Like, the firestorm that erupted because he didn't say wash your necks in the English dub. I'll never forget. I was, like, just uh, rampaging hordes of teenage girls. Just ranting and ranting in all caps on the internet. On MySpace. Yeah, and then the fucking Adult Swim boards. Now, was it Adult Swim or Midnight Run? It was Adult Swim. Okay. Yeah. Like... That that I think Inuyasha was like Inuyasha was fucking huge for a while. Like everybody, even people that hated anime, they would always bring up Inuyasha as the the immediate thing they were going to make fun of. Yeah, and it was like two thousand five, two thousand six. I remember when I went to New York Comic Con in two thousand six, <laughs> New York Anime Festival when it first happened. I remember <laughs> interviewing like six people dressed up as Inuyasha. Yeah, and it was funny because Inuyasha, like when that was big, Inuyasha attracted. The worst of the anime fandom. There was something about that show. I could probably psychoanalyze and figure out why, but I don't feel like doing that right now. But there was something about that show that gathered together anime fandom's worst. So you had, like, if you were an Inuyasha fan, as I say, you're like me and you just like the show. And you want to go see some shit on the internet about it for whatever reason. Maybe you want to see some cool fan art or whatever. You're bored. Good fucking luck, buddy, because if you go on the internet for Inuyasha back then, there's still Inuyasha stuff now, but it's not the way it was back then. Back then, it was like all fucking sites dedicated to whatever ship. Like, there were entire sites way back when. I don't know if that's still going on, 
I remember the, the, the let's call it golden age for laughs of the internet where there were entire fucking websites dedicating to shippings and pairings. I still to this day remember my first exposure to these losers was being a teenager and finding a Bulma Vegeta romance website and trying to process what it was I was looking at. Like, but the, the Inuyasha was inundated with this shit. <coughs> Fan fiction everywhere. Like it, it seemed like oh the whole internet was in it. It was like maybe a third of what the pushiness of bronies are now. I was about like a third of that level was like the way the Inuyasha fandom was. And it was all like the worst. So you'd see the Inuyasha cosplayers and all of them made you cringe. Like it was hard to find an Inuyasha that wasn't morbidly obese. And, and they, <laughs> it was it was some kind of phenomenon that amazes me to this day. Now the thing about Inuyasha... He yeah. wasn't morbidly obese. Yeah, but also, <laughs> the show, uh, you know, I, I'm surprised it didn't have a more vocal, like, regular anime fan fan base because you have a lot of people that watch anime just because of the cool shit, you know, the fights and the titties and, and that stuff. A lot of people, they just sort of casually like anime for that. Inuyasha had a shit ton of that. But I think it was, like, the heavy romance angle and the very girly ending songs. Because Inuyasha was one of those shows that was really big, so they would use the uh, the ending songs to showcase whatever new pop artist was big. It's like with One Piece. That's why One Piece's openings are all shit, because it's just like, hey, who's big? Who's who's popular with the kids? Just have them sing a song about friendship, and we'll use it the opening. It's the same thing, then. It was just what pop star is in right now is have her sing a song about love, and for some reason... And then that's kind of, I think it's, it kind of got a reputation as being for girls, which I never got because if you ever watch Inuyasha, she could get grotesque. And that's why I liked it. One thing I didn't like about Inuyasha and all the people said this about it is that it never felt like it was going anywhere. It's like I would watch it and I'd be into it and then I'd stop watching it and then I watched it again and I'm like, really? There are 50 episodes in between this and the last time I watched it. It looks well, like I, nothing's happened. It had a lot of filler. Like, I mean, a fuck ton of filler in that show. I think that's why they just stopped the anime. They just, and then and then later on, they went and made Inuyasha the final act, which I'm assuming is going to play on Toonami at some point. And didn't they, like, troll you at the end of the Inuyasha? Like, so, still, and, like, nothing like what happened? happened? Well, no, what, they, what happened was the end, the last episode of Inuyasha was just another arc in the manga. And then they just, <coughs> they basically pulled the plug on the anime, I think, not at the last minute, but without much notice. So basically the last episode was, we'll keep on fighting to get Naraku, yay. In and the I, final episode, in the final episodes, right? Or in the final episode of the series before the final episodes came out. Yeah, yeah, that was basically like like it was just they they escaped another one of Naraku's death traps and like we'll we'll never stop till we get him. Let's go, gang. Read and the I, manga. Yeah, and I didn't want them to because Naraku to me was the best part of the show. I mean, this was a guy that just tormented these motherfuckers in these brilliant ways. He kept finding cool new transformation every time he turned into something. It was awesome, and it was either gross or badass looking. And then, like, fucking every time, like, oh, Naraku, we found your weakness. And he, and not only would he be like, nope, I overcame that weakness, but then he'd, like, laugh at him and barf poison at him. Like, here's some bees, bitch, shut up. Sounds like Pokemon. That sounds like um, Yu-Gi-Oh. It's like, ah, I'm going to get you with this trap card. Ha ha ha, but I have this brand new trap card from the Joey deck. That's, and pretty, no, like... <laughs> that's pretty much what he did. But like I said, I love, he was basically, he was tr a, a troll villain before trolling was a thing. Like, like, oh, Naraka, we know we, you have a period of weakness. Like like other half-demons, you have a day when you turn into a human. It's like, bitch, I can pick my day. Here's some bees. <laughs> it's like, oh, Naraka, we found this new weapon to kill you. It's like, bitch, I found a way to defend against it. Here's some here's a poison fart. Bitch, <laughs> more bees. It's more bees. Like, now, now I'm going to kidnap now I'm gonna kidnap your little brother and use him as a puppet. I can kill him any time, but I'm not going to because it makes me laugh to see you get upset. Like, this dude was just masterful at being evil. I loved watching him work. Like, I, like, I didn't even want, like, I don't care about any of your romances. I want to see this guy fuck with more lives because he's so good at it. Even, like, 
in the manga after the anime ended, he's like, oh, I got this minion that's like fucking trying to get all this other powers so he can like devour me. Okay, I'm gonna let him. Bitch, I mean, I'm all up in your face now. I'm gonna steal all your powers and devour you back. Now I got his powers. What? Like, how are we gonna defeat you? You can't. Here's some bees. <laughs> More bees. <laughs> That's the title that. for this podcast. Suck Here's some dick. bees. Um, like, I, but, but, I mean, I think that was the last, uh, that was the last sort of that I remember. Well, not chronologically, because Haruhi and Lucky Star were chronologically, but in terms of just me, recoll- I think that was the last one that we have, that it was the big anime that was the business. Except for maybe Trigun, but I think Trigun still holds that place. And we do actually have, we have a few that have been recommended to us over Twitter, and we're going to go over them. And um, some of them have been mentioned by you and, and JD, but the first one on our list is from IOE Elric, which was at anime underscore Urkel, and he put Wolf's Reign. Oh, yeah. That was awesome. I used to watch that show, too. I used to watch it all with Inasha, Wolf's Rain, Cowboy Bebop, and I read the last series. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, I remember that, and that show pissed me off because they said, oh, it's by the people who did Cowboy Bebop. But they just, <laughs> no, it's just the artistic team. It's not – Shinichiro Watanabe had nothing to do with it. It's just one of the screenwriters. It's really bad. Don't watch it. No one told actually, me. Actually, I, I watched the whole thing, actually. And because uh, I just want to see what happened because there's that there's always that big block where it's just filler or they talk a lot. And stuff, so I kind of skipped that. But the ending, actually, if you'd watched from the start, like the beginning and kind of knew the characters at the ending, I think that the the ending, I like the ending, actually, a lot. Well, I is... like the ending for a whole different reason, because <laughs> Wolves Rain, everybody, I don't care because I hate Wolves Rain. So I have no problem spoiling shows I hate. Wolves Rain's ending felt like I wrote it. Because like <laughs> I hate all these characters, but there's this kind of cool villain, and he's voiced by Steve Bloom. Like, I want this guy to just kill everybody. He's like, okay, oh, you're really gonna do it? <laughs> you're gonna have the yeah. cool villain voiced by Steve Bloom just murder everybody? Okay, can he like, okay, you know that really annoying tree girl that I really despise? Can you have him kill her like slow and brutal? Like we can do it. Like oh my god, <laughs> do we have powers. I like, think that's why a lot of people liked it because it was like. Oh my gosh, he did something that not a lot of anime does. It kills the main, kills the characters. Oh my gosh, it's so deep and oh, so... This um, was one of those shows that it was like doing the evil thing. It would throw weird, confusing shit at you and <laughs> it's deep. Like that ending, like what did the world get rebuilt? So it's like our world, but then their world was our world. So is it like a time loop? Is Darsha's floating eye like evil? Is he evil? So if like... Is that one dude responsible for all evil? If not, why did we have the image of his eye floating? And for the one thing, are these people transforming into wolves, or are they always wolves? If so, how do they hold things? How do they walk in crowds? Are they walking on their hind legs? Is that why we only see them in human form with the illusion? Because if we saw their true forms of wolves walking on hind legs, we couldn't take the show seriously, because that's silly. Wolf's name was just fuck like is the epitome of fucking dumb and i i i think it it does kind of count but i don't think it had the presence that the other shows that i named did but it definitely did um it did have some hype when it was on tsunami but i think the hype behind it died as soon as it went off the air like once it went off to not not tsunami i'm thinking now adult swim yeah once it went off adult swim no one talked about it anymore. And it had a lot of hype because they were building it up as Shin Shin, 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 Shin um, which at the time it was Yajime Hate. Um, that's, he didn't really go by his name around that time. It was more no, Sunrise no, Vehicle. Hajime Yatate actually isn't a person. It's I know. A it was. They were crediting them more so than um, Shin, Shinichiro Watanabe. It had nothing to do with Wolverine at all. Yeah. I think, but if you look at the, if you look at the actual like I remember looking in a magazine, I think it was New Type or I don't know if Otaku USA was out at that time. If you read like the fine print, it was like the producers or something like that. It wasn't like, like the, the character designer and one of the screenwriters. It was like, this is just the, the connections to Cowboy Bebop are tenuous. 
You lying son of a bitch, you tricked me. From the studio that brought you Cowboy Bebop, one of the seminal series of all time. (laughs) Here comes a giant talking walrus we want you to take seriously. Um, The next one is from at Lawrence T. Green, and they say, Have always felt Rosen Maiden gets rather overlooked these days, and Cody go... Uh, Rose Maine is is shit and kind of creepy. <laughs> and and was that ever big? I mean, I know that's kind of like it's got a following in the hardcore anime fan, especially like the types that like to obsess over the anime girls and are probably like a grown ass man, but their avatars on forums are anime little anime girls that are like maybe twelve at the oldest. But like, I don't think Rose and Maine never had the huge following that these other shows did. I think for a series that wasn't on American television and had a decent following because enough people were talking about it. Um, but yeah, it definitely is on the level of any of the series that we talked about. JD, do you have any fe- any feelings towards Rose and Maiden? Being oh, yeah, that you're actually, a girl? I'm joking. <laughs> actually, I did watch the episode of it, but um, it really is, it is more for like a, it's a small cult following for girls. So... So some girls and um, yeah, it's not as you said. It's not doesn't it's not so big in the states like as in being on TV mainstream, but it is kind of more you know that cult following that you just kind of want to avoid. <laughs> Rose Maiden fans make me want to just go to the other side of the room and cry. That room, that corner of the room that you frequently yes. go to on this My podcast. Safe place. Um. At ski four four five one six Brian one Brian Wankowski says Escaflone. Oh yeah, I did forget about oh, that. Yeah. That, was, that was the business for a while. Everybody loves Escaflone. Now no one gives a shit. But you know what? It got pulled from the the Fo- well, I think it was Fox. I think the Fox Kids or whatever thing in the morning mm-hmm. because they showed somebody's ass on this on the <laughs> anime and they pulled it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it all about like at least a movie about um, suicide? No, it was like some girl. I don't know about it, suicide. I just remember it was like some girl. She travels to. She was, ends up being sucked into. It was in Yasha, but with an Eastern flair instead of feudal Japan. It was like magic knights and I think yeah. giant robots, maybe. Yeah, they had giant robots, but she was part of some prophecy. Go figure. And yeah. um, she's she has to help this prince get his thrown from his uncle or something like that but yeah i just i remember it being on on in the i guess in the late 90s i guess being on tv on fox 6 and then they showed this one spy who was hella badass and he killed somebody and then he was a shapeshifter too and he sh- and he shifted back into his his himself and it just the angle was like an uh, upwards tilted angle of his ass like <laughs> and i was like well they actually showed that that's cool and then like and then the next time it just was canceled i was just like what <laughs> it's like you idiot do you not watch these before you put it on but it was a cartoon honestly uh, the only thing i think anyone remembers from that show now is the crazy dude i don't even remember i think delandau or something one dude, it was like fucking insane. He was like hammy about it, and I think he's the only thing anyone remembers from Escafloni anymore. I swore I watched a movie and the series, and I don't remember anything about Escafloni. The only thing I personally remember about Escafloni is just that the the character designer is the same character designer for one of the greatest anime ever made that people should watch instead of Escafloni, Heat Guy J. I Let's remember see. not liking a character. Um... The character design of Esquifone. I it was like it, sharp. Their faces were sharp, right? It's I don't know if it's sharp. It's weird. Um, I wouldn't say no. it's bad. <laughs> uh, I, it's I like very it. like they have very pronounced noses. And yeah, they, that's what I mean. Sharp. Everything's sharp. In fact, everything's very curly and very round and very bold lines. I, I think very it, dated. I don't know. I think it looks a lot better in Hikai J, but Hikai J also has just better animation on the whole, and it's prettier looking, and is an amazing show on every front. Oh my God, people, go watch Hikai. Go buy Hikai J. Support that show. Get the DVDs. Trust me. Hikai J. Um, next, we have a frequent um, Twitter person on Anime Three Thousand, P. Alex. In every single episode, we say he 
is on the Project After community as well as a listener to the other side. So Patrick Perdulik. Perdulik. Um, then he puts Rurouni Kenshin, a.k.a. Samurai X. I freaking love the manga, even if I read it in a really screwed up order. Um, so Rurouni Kenshin, that's it's, that's a... I, think um, I feel I don't know if it ever dipped though. I mean, like yeah, I think I think it. one of the things that happens is it, every year they do something with Rony Kenshin, whether it's a movie, whether it's a new manga, whether it's whatever it is. It always has a way of coming up, and for a series that doesn't have like a brand new season coming out, I think it has as much um, fanfare as it deserves. I um yeah I I think honestly the best what I always think of Rurouni Kenshin is what Dragon Ball Z would be in a popular conscious if they didn't keep remaking it over and over and over again, mm-hmm. like because it's not <coughs> it's not in the consciousness that it was, but that's because when it was it was currently airing. Mm-hmm. So there was that you see the new episode oh so great everybody's watching it. But couldn't but we I, say that about everything that we just mentioned? Well, no, because like some of the others, like I said, with Tenji Moyo, it's like you'd think it's an obscure series now. It's so gone from the conscious. And like, you know, Inuyasha is kind of the same way. But, but with Rooney Kenshin, things have been coming up new about it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, not not at like at the level of Dragon Ball Z where it's like a new re-release or they got that Rock the Dragon where they just made a release specifically to release the old bad dub for shits and giggles sake. Like, there's nothing like that for Rooney Kenshin, but... Like, that's still got a place in people's, you know, consciousness and their hearts. And, you know, that, that lasted. I mean, that, that, you know, you don't have the immediate thing of it, you know, because it's not on, it's not, it's not being aired at the moment. But, I mean, it's still, like, you still got people talking about it. You still got people listening in it as one of their favorite shows. You still got, I don't know if you got so many cosplayers, but I think that's just because there's, more intricate stuff now that cosplayers get off on cosplaying. And also, um, if they cosplayed Roroni Kenshin, they'd have to take a break from cosplaying as the fucking trolls from Homestuck, and we can't have that. You always see at least one Sonosuke walking around. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so that's like the easiest cosplay to do. Yeah. There's no Roroni, shirt. Bad Roroni Kenshin doesn't really go anywhere. It just, it, the, the fans um, quieted down, but they're still there. Um, we have Gear 9000, another um, frequent um, um, commenter, with Yu Yu Hakusho. Although we talk about it every single week on the on this podcast, it has considerably died down um, out there in the internet land, unless you're well, talking about Hunter x Hunter. That's, that's kind of like uh, Rona Kenshin. It's still got that place in people's hearts and people yeah. just think about it. I, think, I don't think people have forgotten about it, but it just... Yeah, I, I guess we got to measure it on that because obviously people aren't going to talk about it if it hasn't come out. But people, I guess mentioning it in conversation is probably how you can measure whether or not I, it's I think, on. honestly, if you want to measure something that should be on this list, it'd be the reaction people will give if you bring it up. Like the shows that I listed, if you bring them up, people are like, oh, yeah, I remember that show. I haven't even thought about it in so long. But if you bring up Yu Yu Hakusho, they'll be like, oh, shit, that was my jam. Oh, my God, I love that. <laughs> like, you know, it's not relevant because it's long over and done with. But yeah. it has made its place. Like, like you just show a picture of Kurama at, to, to a fucking anime fan, and they'll be like, oh, shit, Yu Yu Hakusho, hell yeah. yeah. You know, that's, Wolf demon. Um, that's, just, that's, uh, that's another show I think that's just ingrained in hearts and minds. At Casper to Kenneth must have um, must have had a conversation, <laughs> both have a conversation earlier because he goes Tenchi Muyo, <laughs> and is it just me or does Harui Suzumiya feel like it dropped off considerably as well? So that's kind of we already yes, it did proving that there may very well be a god after all. <laughs> and I'm going straight to the next one because we we. Had our set our Cody said his piece about Tenchi Muyo and Haru Suzumiya. Fairy's Butterfly s- says, Love Uke, Luke Ukai or Uki, Wiki. Wiki. Not only was it funny, but kick ass too. Abilities were pretty damn interesting. Was anyone ever talking about that? I think maybe five people. 
It's one of those. I think, I think JD people. talked about it once in a podcast we did back in 2008. But outside Wait, of that, what was it called? Law of oh. Uki, Ukai. Ah, oh, Law of Uki. La yeah, Uke. I remember that show, but I don't think it, it gained as much uh, following. I think more people who were in manga liked it than, or uh, who already had like the some DVD or something. Then they kind of liked it because it's kind of had a little bit more of a old school feel to it. So. But it's still not as good as like you know Dragon Ball and all them, so <laughs> it's kind of has a small fan base to it. But I did watch this whole series though, so so it's and kind of there. <laughs> next we have, and this she actually was on a manga corner episode. We have Jamie Lynn Lano at Jamie Ism I E I S M. She yep. goes Ranma uh, Ranma one, one half or half and a half or whatever. Yeah. That's that show was pretty big at one point. I don't know if that that's another one I don't think ever dropped off. I think that's still in the consciousness. I mean, like, yeah, Ron Moore and Half gets brought up today. But I don't think a lot of people are seeking it out as much. Well, because those people all saw it. It's one of those kind of things. Like, I, if you haven't seen it, you're probably never going to see it. But everyone else already saw it. Did they recently release it or are going to re-release it somewhere? Oh, they not. did. You know what they did is uh, Shonen Jump uh, last month released a Rama half two and two in one edition volume one, so they're redoing the the manga series, but they're putting two volumes together. <laughs> okay, and that's from the same creator of Inuyasha, Inuyasha and your other story at Sue or whatever. I'm it. not a good enemy. <laughs> the one about space girlfriend. <laughs> um. <laughs> And then she also says, also Slayers, Tenchi Muyo, Ah My Goddess, and then she says, I can go on forever. Oh, and then she does, and she has more after that. (laughs) Slayers did not go away. They're still doing Slayers. They They keep re-releasing that. They just had that re-release of Slayers that everyone was going nuts for. Everybody still loves Slayers. Again, it's another thing. You show that chick from Slayers, people go nuts. Tenchi Muyo, we've talked about that. Oh my goddess, that was pretty big at one point. And yeah. I don't hear about it at all anymore, anywhere. I don't know. I don't know if it was as big as like some of the other stuff I made. Well, I mean, but... it's nothing's gonna be as big as something else, but it was big for what it was. It was one of those series that people talked about at nauseum. Maybe if people finally realize it's fucking misogynist and creepy. I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's um, one of the great anime romances. Well then anime romances must be really awful because holy shit. Um, Escaflone, Project A Co. You guys talked about that on your podcast. Marmalade yeah. Boy, MK Ray Earth, Ray Earth, Fushigi Yugi. That's one that I would have put on my list because I remember when I was just getting into anime, it was like at that point after Toonami and Adult Swim, and I was ready to find out what else. That series was the one that was most recommended to me. And I think that was the first one I watched outside of television. And, um, you know, I'm like, oh, okay, I guess this is the most popular thing right now. But, like, nobody. I think I'm the only one I ever hear talk about that series. And I don't even I really that talk series. about it. I absolutely hate that series. Wow. I like <laughs> I the, the theme. I like the theme song more than the actual series. I I read the manga and I was just like, I, I fucking hate this manga. I don't know why I have it in my bookshelf. Like I don't I don't wow. even know how I got it. it just I don't think I've ever it. heard you say you hate a series before. I don't even know what it's about. Mm-hmm. Isn't it like um I I think it's like um the guy It's a cursed family. It's about a cursed family. <laughs> and they it's like feudal era or something and Whatever. Well, it was a it's, show. It's, it's not worth <laughs> watching or reading. <laughs> hey, Co and Ray Earth, though. Those are some good choices. I haven't even heard about anyone talk about those in a long time. Except for maybe Ray Earth, I hear occasionally get brought up. Um, hey, mm. Co. Like, like I, don't, I don't even know where I hear it. I just hear it. Just it, The name just pops up. Like like some weird internet Tourette. You'll be going through animation. All of a sudden, Ray Earth. Oh, yeah, that's a thing. Well, you it know? used to be called MKR, actually. In the late nineties, yeah, like, you know, like DBZ, uh, yeah, MKR. <laughs> I know Project Echo that did drop off, and and anyone wants to see that that caused a, a rift in the other side, it was a divide on our podcast. I mean, granted, I did it on purpose because I knew uh, one of my co-hosts would also wouldn't would like it the way I did, and one of my co-hosts would hate it. So I told him he'd like it, just <laughs> just just to. Uh, Sort of trick him into getting an entertaining podcast. He's like, okay, I'm going to watch this. Damn you, Cody. 
So and it, and it did make that's one of my favorites favorite other side episodes. Yeah, that did like you don't hear about that anymore. You can't even like find shit on that anymore. Again, I think it's another it, kind of a Tenchi case where the good the good Aiko ended, and everything else was shit, and that may have tapered off interest because like the first two Aiko movies were pretty good. Like the first one was good, and then the second one was fantastic, and then the third and fourth one were boring and shitty. And then they had Aiko the Versus. It was like, what the fuck am I watching anymore? And I think that kind of killed interest because, like, who the fuck? It's like, I love Aiko the Versus. Like, <laughs> I, got, I got that shit on DVD. I watched that in, like, a ritual. Project Aiko the Versus. I love that. That's my jam. No one says that. Ever. So I think, it's, I think it's like a tenshi situation where the good Aiko came, was as long since been done but more Aiko kept coming out, but it was doo doo Aiko, and that that tapered off interest. And speaking of tapering off interest, we have A O Y podcast who mentions Love Hina. You oh, want God. more because there is a lot more. Oh fuck no no no, no. Love Hina <laughs> sucked ass. Like I, I'm sorry, I got this is the one series I absolutely like. I, I I wish I could just burn it and then bury it and then bring it up again and just like send it into the nebula or something. I just yes. it, it's you know my mom hatred. You know my mom bought me one volume of this like for twenty five cents a cigar so right now I'm thinking like yeah, oh she right deal and then and then when I read it I was just like okay now I see why it was twenty five cents and I was just like oh my god why why did I read this and like I just. I think I threw it away, actually. I think it's the only manga I ever threw away. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Love Hina is fucking terrible. That's, one of the, that's what we call on the other side a sad manga for sad people. Or a loser show for loser people. It's just like, pick your favorite fantasy girlfriend, even though the main character is going to hook up with the most housewifey one. And they always hook up with the same one. It's the one with the long, dark hair who cooks them food. Because it's usually against them. <laughs> it's and because fucking Japan's got some fucked up views on fucking women, and it's always gonna be the fucking submissive housewife girl is gonna be the one that he's gonna pick from like episode one. But he's fucking nervous, so he's never and he's you know has no libido, so he's never gonna go for it. So you're gonna get like twenty fucking volumes of cock tees where every other girl half of whom are hotter than the one he picks, are all going to want to jump his bones. But eventually he'll settle on meh. <laughs> he'll, just, he'll settle on the the, the beautiful long-haired doormat. And, and then, Love is another one of those shows. And then they have all the same scenes, like the shirt getting wet scenes or someone running around naked or... You know, them seeing each other in the shower naked or something like that. Oh, God. I just wanted, I, I'm sorry. I just wanted to punch, like, the characters in the face. Like, if the they're real. The harem genre is one of the worst genres in anime. Yes. And it makes I me. I concur. It, it often makes me ashamed to be an anime fan. But as <laughs> I say this, I have Toonami muted in the background. And there's a commercial for Black Lagoon. And as I'm thinking of talking about this, like, anime genre that makes me ashamed to be an anime fan it's like my tv just remember hey cody it's not that bad we have shows like this well thank you tv you made me feel a little better i was getting bummed um Afina got me me depressed and you show me black lagoon i'm like yeah that's right yeah things aren't so bad an aoa podcast also mentions lucky star seriously who talks about that show now that was that's what he says but it's still the characters are really popular here in Japan. Like they use them for like pachinko, oh, not pachinko, um, casino places. <laughs> so lucky star. And another series that I wholeheartedly agree: Outlaw Star, and that's oh, from yeah. Ad Abyss, yeah. nineteen ninety-two. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that show is fucking amazing. Yeah, and I, mean, I think it's honestly just because it ended. I don't think I don't think I haven't heard anybody say anything bad about Outlaw Star. Outlaws, if you don't like Outlaw Star, you're a bad person. I think it's on it's on that list with Bakuto and Black Lagoon. Yeah. If you don't like Outlaw Star, you're a bad person. You really, I mean, really, I, I'm feeling good just thinking about Outlaw Star. That's how good Outlaw Star is. It just puts me in a good mood. 
just thinking about it. Awesome opening song, and the gorgeous artwork, and the ending. Great cast of characters. Outlaw Star is the only anime with an awesome cat girl. That's how great Outlaw <laughs> Star is. Outlaw Star has a cat girl, and she is awesome. She is not a fucking fap bait. She is not ooku or any of that shit. Star line. She is one of the coolest fucking. Sh- that is one of the best fucking female casts too. Because one of those. Because usually I've I've made this complaint before. I did a whole fucking podcast on it. Anime sucks at depicting women a lot of the time. <sighs> like even some of the best shows, like One Piece, has one good female character and then like a cadre of awful, unfortunate implications in its female cast. You don't have a lot of anime that just has a solid, awesome cast of female characters. You can literally count on, like, your hands, like, the awesome women in anime that aren't, like, fat bait that people say are awesome just because they shot a really big beam at some dude. Like, no, yeah. these are legit awesome characters. And Outlaw Star is one of those shows. I mean, half of the crew was women, and they were the ones that kicked the ass and yeah, Gene could kick some ass, but it's because he had a gun that had magic bullets. He had fucking Twilight Suzuka. She just fuck shit up with a wooden sword. She didn't fucking care, just cleaving shit in twain. And then Aisha Clan Clan is probably one of my favorite characters on that show. She was just fucking, she was just fucking break shit, and then she'd party, and then she'd break more shit. And you didn't fuck with her, and then she'd party again because she likes to drink and fuck you. She was awesome. That show was awesome. I want to go watch it again. <laughs> um, and the last, well, that was the last one. And the next question that we have um, in regards to me looking at my notes, uh, <laughs> um, what are your favorite shows this spring? And be, given that we haven't watched a lot of, collectively watched a lot of the shows this spring, this is more of a, you know, let's see what people are thinking out there. And we have a few people well, I that... That's because I've written off spring. It's just... <laughs> and then fuck everything else. Um, So far... Okay, we have at Sherry underscore DC. So far, Haiku, Ishukan Friends, Akuma no Riddle, Goku... Go come on! What you should be reading this, JD. I'm well, there's stuck no at this. list. I have no uh, list right now, so now I therefore do I this. cannot read Crap. what's blank. <laughs> Go, you know what? It's all about confidence. If I read it like I knew what I was talking about, no one would second guess me. But or I'm me. like, I'm all like, Goku come me, Goku ma wa Usagi deska. I know that's a rabbit. I know Usagi's rabbit. Um, and Mahuika. So that person. Made an ass of me. Thank you. At Sherry underscore DC. Curse you to the heavens. Um, We have at Ed the Mighty. Captain Earth. Which, you know, people have been talking about. Hitsugi no Chikaya. Chakai. Chakawa. Chakawawawasa. Chaika. And Blade and Soul. That one I got. Um, So... <laughs> Yeah, that's really that. blade and soul, man. What are people thinking? <laughs> <laughs> um, another Ishu kind of friends, but this is at Guy Shalev, Mishugi and Ping Pong. Oh, yeah, 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 that one. And then we have at P. Alex again, he says Stardust Crusaders, yeah, and he hasn't he hasn't really seen anything else. Nothing else to see. <laughs> and Anthony Askew at Ant Askew, I believe he's on Dynamite in the brain. Wow, longest pause. Ever. I, I was thinking if it's <laughs> and the brain or in the brain because I always get it wrong. But I've had them on the podcast a couple of times. Really good guys. Good, cool podcast. Check them out. Um, Stardust Crusader, Crusaders, no doubt about that. And that's obviously the JoJo. And then he puts, he also puts, that's all you need to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then we have Mishiugi, and this is at Bruce M- MCF McFarling. Um, he's put Mushishi, Captain Earth, Magic Coffin, Rifle Girl, and her Iron 
blood buds. I wonder if that's all one thing. Coffin, Probably. coffin rifle girls and her iron blood buds, and that's what iron you, blood butt buds like birds. I like Budweiser. Oh, smoke. okay. Because I was like, is this going to be a whole anime about a girl on her period? What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Why would anyone want to watch that? Well, it is anime. That's true. <laughs> um. So those are the shows that people are watching. A few people are watching. We're going to continue to watch the new... Well, I'm going to make sure I continue to watch it because I'm the one who made that proclamation. I'm going to do it. I'm no, no sense that you guys suffer in my poor decision making. But um, my goal is to watch at least one episode. But now it's time for you! It's time for news. You don't get your news. Okay. Um, Cody, you both have some news. Cody and JD, you have some news for us. And then after we're done with news, you guys can go ahead and do it, do whatever it is you're doing, listeners. So, JD, tell us what news you have for us. Okay. Um, in I'm not sure if fans know, but there's Akihabara, which is the main like anime and electronics center in in uh, Tokyo, they're going to have a they have a new anime street near Akihabara called Asaga, Asagaya Street, and it's originally it has a lot of uh, let's call it um, animation studios and animation studio schools, but now they're converted it to having a lot of shops and things catered towards anime uh, fans like cosplay shops and maybe some uh, made cafes and whatnot. So, if you're ever in Tokyo and you go to Akihabara, you should stop by this anime street, Asagaya Street. Nice. And, Cody, what news do you have for us? I got two tidbits. One, nice. just found out today, to not, as of this recording, y'all will have heard of it by now, Toonami announced they will be airing Attack on Titan. <laughs> Starting May 3rd. Attack on Titan will air on Toonami. It will take Space Dandy's time slot. Space Dandy, I think, is getting bumped up, I think, 12.30 instead of 11.30. And a bunch of other shows are getting bumped up a half hour. and Or either 12 or 12.30, Space Dandy's going to get bumped. And then basically Attack on Titan is sliding into the 11.30 time slot to lead in Toonami. And what a great way to start Toonami. Um, so you folks, I don't know when the DVDs are coming out off the top of my head. So I think that's before they come out. So y'all will be able to check out Attack on Titan, see what the buzz is all about on Toonami starting May 3rd. In other news, for DBZ fans who like some fighting games, a bunch of guys using the Mugen fighting engine, which is an engine that lets you make customizable fighting games and <laughs> Normally, people like you can download characters and stages and have a collection of like a customized fighter of your own. People are using this engine. And I, I use it, it's like a side hobby of mine because I love me some fighters. And some people are using this engine to create a Dragon Ball Z 2D fighter done as if it were a Capcom fighter in the 1990s, like the Marvel vs. Capcom, Street Fighter vs. X Men. Those kind of fighting games. Like, it is fully customized. Like, the sprites are all done from scratch. They're all very intricately done. It looks like professionally made. It looks like, I mean, the 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 shtick is they're doing it as if this were a Capcom arcade fighter, and it looks like one. Even right down to, there's a trailer out now, and the trailer even begins with, like, the old things that began the start of those old arcade games. The winners don't use drugs, and then the little... Like, uh, I forget what it was, but the little sound chip bumper, you know, all those old 90s arcade staples, it starts with all those. And I, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, there's a playable demo. I could be wrong about that one. I'm pretty sure there is, but I know there's a trailer. You check it out now, it's called Hyper Dragon Ball Z. Nice. And it looks to be amazing. So... Those of you pining for a good DBZ fighter, 
You know, because usually Dragon Ball Z, they've had some pretty good 3D fighters, but their 2D fighters were all pretty bad. So those of you pining for a good DBZ 2D fighter, those of you who are like me and prefer your fighters in two dimensions, your wishes have been answered. <coughs> nice. And with that, we're going to our takeaway section of the podcast. So let's find out, JD, what do you have going on? I was going to say cooking, but I always do that. What do you have going on with um with yourself? Um, right now, the my blog, Jade's es- Escape, has a Screen Tones giveaway, and it will go on until April 26th. So anyone who has, like, any kind of art project that they're working on or anything, all they have to do is just post a link uh, of their art project or manga project onto, the, onto either the Anime 3000 forums or on my blog, jadesescape.wordpress.com. <laughs> And just one lucky winner will win uh, Screen Tone straight from Japan for free. So that's that's the contest. I know it's for manga uh, artists who are looking to get, uh, you know, Screen Tones when they can't afford it or they can't find it in their country. So this is a good chance for them to try to get something. So that's what I'm doing now. And in some exciting news, the infamous and often mentioned manga corner should be out by the time you hear this it was originally supposed to come out saturday but we once again are having issues with our blasted website and um soon as we get back online we will be releasing that episode of the manga corner that was supposed to come out on the 12th so if you already heard it make sure you leave some comments and let jd and colin know exactly what you guys think and, um, yeah, we look forward to hearing from you guys. And, um, Cody, what do you have pop locking and dropping? Well, besides attempting to recover, I'm still working on Cloud Scratcher as always. www.cloudscratcher.com. Uh, working on getting some other sides out. Wasn't able to get one this week. You folks may have noticed because of this flu. <coughs> um,. I, we may end up postponing that uh, Terror from Mars episode because I'm having a hard time getting my co-hosts to read it because this thing is so damn racist. I think we feel like every time we read a page, we have to donate to a black charity to say we're sorry. <laughs> this thing isn't like you all hear when we do the podcast. This thing is like the amazingly racist. So we've got a couple other episodes. I don't know what as of this recording, I don't know what episode we're going to pick. Um, it's either going to be, we're going to hunker down and actually do terror from Mars, or we may postpone that. Um, but another one we're going to be doing cause the summer, uh, 2014 preview lineup has come out. So we're, of course we'll do a rundown of that. And then we're going to do an episode on a bridge series. Um, if that, that one's also down the line and we're also planning on another episode on crazy, terrible web manga and web comics and wannabe manga and all the crazy dumb people that write this stuff so one of those will be the next episode that goes up hopefully i won't sound like i am simultaneously depressed and going through puberty when we record it but that is basically what we're doing right now and as far as what i'm doing you know just uh putting out podcasts and Definitely, if you are into what we're doing, let us know on the website when it's up. And we're putting up episodes on YouTube as well. Um, It's not the same time as the new episodes, but if you go back and check it out, you might, if you haven't had a chance to listen to some past episodes and you want to watch it on YouTube, not necessarily watch it, but, you know, see the video form. Go to youtube.com slash A3KTV. That's our channel. We'll put stuff up there. And also looking at to put new content up there as well. So hopefully you'll see that in the next couple of weeks. And outside of that, thank you so much for listening to the A3K podcast. I'm Sean Russell. And with me, as always, we had J.D. Banks and Cody Byer. From all of us, we want to say thank you so much and see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye.
Thank you for listening to the A3K Network. Visit our website at anime3000.com to find even more content from the producers of this show. Be sure to share your thoughts about this episode by leaving some feedback in our comments section. Want to be featured on a future episode? Send your questions to contact at anime3000.com and address it to the podcast of your choice. You can even leave a voicemail at 954-780-6201. That's 954-780-6201. And as always, thank you for being you. <laughs>